Let's start on the Madison side because I think that's a little a little bit more fun and maybe what people are a little bit more interested to start with. Oh, yeah, definitely more concrete as well, too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, Madison in these last couple FFD drafts has have, you know, Matt started getting all over him. But I've been I've been hanging out with Madison. And if you've been listening to us all off season, we've been kind of telling you, hey, make sure you go get Madison uh, or in throw the 13th in, round and, and just to trade for and for the last few years i've been kind of telling you to get madison and it's basically like right now madison is like the quintessential like fun part about dynasty right because you don't even really have to like madison necessarily as a player but like the whole idea was i traded for madison two years ago and i traded away i traded again for him last year with the idea that at some point it seems like dalvin's gonna go away the vikings keep liking him they did they re-upped him he's cheap so there, he's going to stick around. He's been decent when he plays, uh, you know, uh, uh, in his f- few couple of games. I forget what the stat was, but he's been in, he's been somewhere around an RB1 and four out of five of them, I believe. Five of six games Cook missed. He scored over 15 PPR points. So, you know, pretty, pretty good numbers there. But that's this is what Dynasty is all about. It's about like. Grabbing that guy who maybe everybody's not quite forward thinking on and in a league full of sharks, maybe you're not getting any Madison, but he's always been a guy who's been high in the court of public opinion, who everybody's always cheered for him when he gets the chance. They've always wanted him to get the chance. And those are always the guys that I kind of keep in the back. I register just like you were talking about in the last show. You have a lead, You had a league mate. You wrote it down. It's like those kind of guys who have been getting the jeers from the public for a very long time. I keep that in the back of my mind, and I'm always trying to angle towards those guys because when something like this does pop up where all of a sudden he's going to be, you know, rifled into uh, potentially starting territory, you don't even have to let it in a week. You could trade away Madison. He does not need to see the field for you if you don't want to. Nope. Um, You know, and my whole idea, what, what it was like, all right, like, there's a decent chance I could get a first for Madison if he ever gets shuffled into this position. So I guess let's kind of start there. We'll kind of do a, like a little buy, sell, hold here on Madison. If you're holding the cards on Madison, are you, are you buy, are you selling? Are you, or are you holding? And we'll, we'll get to the buy part at, at the end before we switch to cook. What, what are your general thoughts? If you, if you could get a first for Madison, is he gone? Do you? If, if, if let's say your team's, you know, pretty good. Maybe you're not the top contender, but you feel like you're in a in a top four or five situation going into the season. And and maybe Madison could be a decent part of that. Does that give you any pause to just say see you or are you guys just all cashing? It would depend on my team build, but if I'm playing for twenty twenty three, more than likely than not, I'm just gonna hang on to him. So you're fine with hanging if 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 you're if you feel like he could make a big impact on your team and help you win some cash. Yeah, for sure. Because Minnesota already came out and said they view him as a three down back. So right. So is there any any worry between Chandler and uh, they McBride and who is the guy from TCU? Iguanu. In Iguanu. And no, no worry that they'll just have like kind of a hodgepodge and a mixture, or or you th- you, you feel pretty good about. I still feel pretty good. Yeah, I would say I feel pretty good about it, too. And I know this is Dynasty and we all get caught up in this is, you know, it's all about the value and you cash out and you go, um, you know. But again, if if you weren't trade, if you were, I was just trading for him for this potential moment. Not I don't I'm kind of indifferent uh, on him as a play. I think he's fine. I think he could be good. You know, what's the first you're getting? I'm not trading him for the I'm not trading the 111 for him. Right, but if you could get a delusional owner who's you know constantly middling and and an injury or two could could be a little later, um, you know, or earlier rather, uh, first. If I'm talking, I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the upside's there, especially immediately with one of those late firsts. All right, well let's let's frame this a different way then. Would you what would you trade Madison for Miles Sanders? Yes. Hex a decimal. Yes. Yeah. I, I would trade Madison for Miles Sanders. I would trade Madison for a late first. Um, I don't believe he's going to, he, he right now is the top of the depth chart, but I don't believe he'll be the top of the depth chart come uh, 
you know, week six. So that's my feeling on Madison. I, I think there's still some talent out there on the free agent wire, and there's still a lot of cuts that are going to happen in camp that I think they're going to put some bodies in there, and I just have a really hard time feeling confident. Now, if I, on the flip side of that, right, if I'm a contender, I'm, I'm holding on to him. There's no, no point for me to sell him because I do think there's going to be point values and there's going to be um if i want to get off on the off ramp i think there's going to be times to do that through the through the season but if i'm middle of the pack to like obviously if i'm rebuilding like yeah i'm selling them all day long yeah so they gave him a two-year contract worth roughly seven million uh per or total total mm. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, still, that's that's, you know, I think a team I think that's where the fucking Vikings want to be right now. If not, they would just keep Dalvin and sure. pay him 14 million. Sure. So they, right. they you know, their aspirate. They won a lot of close games last year. Their aspirations yep. probably you, know, you don't like to say it, but you, maybe you're not thinking that you're going to be as great as you are. Now, you think that the offense, maybe you'll be a little better. Hawkinson was great as soon as he came over. You'd have to think Addison at this point is an upgrade on Thielen should be an interesting and i think the o-line can be decent now with a lot of questions on the defense so we're not really sure you know dalvin cook was you know on the chart which is why everybody hates dalvin cook right now last in this yards over expected uh in the chart that's been passed around a million times so you know how much of that was dalvin how much of that was what was going on over there i know that that factors in a lot of those things before i get any fucking comments about it um (laughs) but you know I guess I, I guess I feel similarly to kind of what you guys are saying. Like if, if you're a contender, then I, you know, I guess you hold, you could just say, Hey, I'm going to trade for a first and then I'm going to get the more regardless, even if I am a contender, probably the smart money is to actually trade here. I, I'm not going to always say that you, you trade away. You should probably just get that first and then turn that first into something that you feel a little bit more sure about. Now, if you feel like Madison's going to be the guy for two years and I think he can produce and be a nice RB two for you and with RB1 potential upside if he is going to get some three down work, which we have seen in the past. He's at least done it. And it, kind of, it would always drive me nuts because I had some cook and you know, you'd have to, they're, they're wearing two and four. And sometimes you'd be like, fuck yeah. And it'd be Madison. And you'd be like, son of a bitch. Uh, right. You know, so, all right. So Miles Sanders, you'd both trade for Miles. Hands down. Yeah. How about like uh, AJ Dillon and a two? No, I don't think I'd do that. Keep it Madison. Keeping Madison on that one. Yeah, I'm keeping Madison there. What about Aaron Jones in a two? No, same answer. Same answer for me, at least. Yep. Contender? I don't really think if, it makes that much of a difference from Jones to James no? Dillon. All right. I mean, a little bit, but not much. How about James Conner in a two? Is that, is that lesser, probably, for yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Probably lesser, yeah. yeah. Though I think I think Conner would probably outperform those two, personally. But, Especially this but year. Yeah, especially this year. How about Swift? That'd make it interesting. I might I might take the gamble on Swift if I'm a contender, because I think the upside of Swift is higher than Madison, right? So if I'm sure if I'm a contender, I get a second and I get Swift out of the deal and he's in a very competitive oh, uh, open Swift in backfield. a second, it's a slam dunk. I don't think Swift. I, I just think meant getting, Swift. I thought he meant just as, Swift. As lone lone uh, Swift straight up, Swift Swift for Madison. Yeah, I think I'd do that. I think I would Could, take Swift too. Let's just play a fun little game. If they add Kareem Hunt, what is your feelings on Madison? They're back down to where they were. Right. I mean, not and I mean, where I, they were, but close. I guess I, I don't think, know why. I guess my only rebuttal, and I understand what you're saying. My only rebuttal to that is why are you bringing in anybody to pay him any more money if you're already trying to get rid of running back money, essentially? But if you're going to get Kareem Hunt for a million, right. I guess. But if you're Kareem Hunt, maybe I maybe you can't get anything anywhere else and uh, you know but I feel like there's another million out there that you could go play for somebody else for a million I, I guess I don't know yeah I'm sure Tampa would love to pay a million dollars that was kind of what I was saying smart money would say to eliminate all these problems if you could get the first take it um, I'm not yeah. taking any first though that's the problem you're not taking just just any first yeah right Swift I, I think is interesting right uh, Very interesting. Miles yeah. was a slam dunk for you guys, so Miles over Swift. I just took Miles over Swift in the mock draft we're doing. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's safe to say that Dobbins would be. Uh, you would you would swap Madison for Dobbins? Yeah, I think you have to. I would. Yep. So would that be the play for you then? It's either if it's not a pick, which it seems like we're kind of a little split on. It's it's what does it take to get as high as the next running back as you could get for off of Madison? Yeah, or adding Madison plus a piece to go up and get another. That, piece. That's what I mean. Like you know, 
Madison plus what gets you? Uh, Josh Jacobs. Tony Pollard. Yeah. Or Ramondre, Najee. Maybe you don't like Tony, but Najee. Like yeah. what, what does it take to get Madison? Madison hot in the streets right now plus what gets you Josh Jacobs? Would you add a first if you're a contender to Madison to get a Josh Jacobs or Ramondre or a Najee? I think I would if I'm if if I know I'm a contender, it's a late first, and for me, the way I feel on Madison, I, I like him. Don't um, I don't want that to be construed that I don't. I just don't know if he is the Algier of this season. Um, like I I I I feel like if I can go <laughs> to um, the knife. <laughs> I feel like if I can go to if I can go to Josh Jacobs, which I, I you know who knows that that could be a crap show there. Um, in Vegas, but if I could go to any of those backs that you said, I, I feel a lot more confident because at that point, if I'm a contender, most likely I'm not relying on Madison anyways, right? So I'm really playing the depth card. I'm really playing the flex position in my bye week card to get into the playoffs. And then, you know, one of those guys get hot at the end. So, so I think I would do that, especially at this point with the news hot. I think you could, I think there's a rocket shot right now that yeah. as soon as Cook's officially released, Everybody on Twitter is starting to, oh, look at this run from Madison, you know, last year where he broke this and that and that, you know, that, all that stuff starts to, to groundswell. Um, you know, I think you could rocket shot and get some decent deals out there. Um, and, and I think I would do that because I don't I don't know. Um, I don't know. For me, Madison is not a I mean, he may be decent this year, but he may not. And I, I definitely don't think they would roll with Madison two years in a row, in, in my opinion. Solely Madison two years in a row. Yeah, solely Madison. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Madison and a two, Javante Williams. I'm mm. taking the upside on Javante there. I'm doing yeah. I'm, I'm pulling I'm pulling the trigger there. Yeah, as long as Denver doesn't sign Cook, yeah, I think I'd be doing yeah. that too. Yeah, <laughs> which we'll we'll get there in yeah. just a second. And then all right, I got I got maybe one more, and then maybe we could reference a receiver or two because I know we're just talking about running backs. Yeah, how about Damian Pierce? If you could, could swap those two straight up. No, I don't think I would do that. You're, you're keeping Madison. Yeah, that's tough for me. I'll 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 take the swing on Pierce. I could that's go. Been my guy I could go a, either yeah, way. Yeah. I would if I could get a sweetener on either side. It would make me go that way. But I feel like those guys are pretty e- even for me right now. And, and and I would take the Javante deal. I would figure out what it takes Madison and what to get me up to Dobbins. I think as well. Um, I, that'd be I, kind of I, like my first ex- exploration. I think if I'm a contender too, I'm, I might look at Kamara as well. See what I, I think can you go get plus plus for Kamara. I mean, especially right now that they're two trending totally opposite guys currently. <laughs> sure. Right. Uh, what about like a guy like a Cam Akers? Could you? What would you get? Like, obviously, I think we'd rather have Madison over Akers, but if you could get Akers man, in a second, I think I think that's I think that's pretty pretty close for me, and I, I think I would almost still maybe rather have Akers just because I, I don't know maybe not. But yeah, you you may be able to squeeze a little extra out of there. If I could get Acres plus a second for Madison, I'd do that too. Yeah. Same thing with Rashad White. I'll just take the plus plus. I you know I like the now 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 we're no Rashad White. I don't know, I, th- I view I guess I would view Madison and Rashad White similarly, where I, I think they could be both productive this year and be fine for you, but I wouldn't be wanting to get stuck holding that. Um, I mean, I yeah, I I agree with you there. I I think I'd also. Um, I think I'd also look and explore personally about um, Charbonnet because, you know, or, or three sticks, um, you know, we'll, we'll have a pod coming out on that not too far, but, but I think that Madison as a starter, you might be able to sneak, um, you know, depending on the value of uh, three sticks in your league, um, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Walker, (laughs) sorry, Ken Walker, the third (laughs) Kenny three sticks, Uh, you might be able to sneak him or, or even Charbonnet. And I, I think I would transition to that that backfield as well out, out of out of Madison personally. Yeah. So right, let's throw a couple receivers out there real quick before we switch to Dalvin. How about Deontay Johnson? For me that's a quick accept. I'll take Deontay. If I'm a contender, I think I'm sticking with Madison. I just don't know how I feel about Deontay, especially mm. long term. Big buy all off season for me. And you know, like I said, we've been telling we've been singing Madison's praises in just about every trade show we've done in the off season and last year. Uh, so a lot of Madison love, but I would swap that. And Deontay's been right there with me. 
Uh, so I think Deontay just no touchdowns this last year, a ton of targets. Uh, I'm going to continue to get targets. I think this offense moves forward. I'll, I'll take Deontay Johnson uh, in that swap. Um, let's see here. Uh, Bateman? I'd no. take Bateman. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, so Bateman. Uh, no? Uh, it's not, so not many questions with Bateman. It's just, there's just so many questions there. Is he ever going to get stay healthy enough and put it together? I mean, obviously, we're we're moving more towards Baltimore, hopefully being a little bit more of a pass-friendly team. I mean, it can't be any less pass-friendly than it was under Roman. So, How about Hollywood? Yeah, I want to take that back. I, I don't think I would do Bateman. The, 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 the more that I sat here and contemplated, I don't think I would do that straight up. I, I definitely would do Hollywood all day long. You don't like it, Matt? I'm probably doing Hollywood I'm just because. Definitely doing Hollywood. Just because yeah. of the volume. Just Debbie does Hollywood all day. How about like a Cortland Sutton? Would that be like a two and a, and a Sutton for Madison? I'm out on Sutton, so out it would be Sutton? nothing for me. Yeah. Okay. You're sticking. You're sticking to it there. Mm-hmm. I could be intrigued with Sutton and the two. I could be too. I can't quit Sutton. No, nope, I, 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 can, I can't either. See him out there, and I'm like, oh man, that looks so much fun. But just you know, then there's there's some there's some TBD uh, there with with. Um, Denver is the entirety. <laughs> sure. Um, how about how about Dotson? Yeah, Johan. Yeah. Johan. Yes. I, I think I'm going Dotson there. I, yeah. I agree. I think we can we can swap in in for uh, some Johan Dotson there. Let's find one more that could be interesting here. How about Debo? If you could, if Debo. you could, if you could do like Madison and a two. And and get Debo on a contender, yeah. All Debo day. is interesting because I mean, it seems like upside. like he's kind of yeah. dead right now. Like we do a lot of drafts, mm-hmm. he kind of sits around in a little bit of a dead zone. He didn't have a great kind of year last year. They brought in CMC. They could be a little redundant and eat each other at times. Thoughts? You said you said for sure Debo on a contender. For sure Debo for me, yeah. Straight I, up. I, think- I mean, I said Madison and a second for Debo. Yeah, Madison in a late second because I'm a contender for Debo. Yes, all day for me. I think you got to, right? I think so. And I'm even an Ox fan. <laughs> I mean, I think the upside's there with Debo. I just don't know if you're getting the consistency that you can get with Madison. I think I'm higher on Madison than you are. So, Yeah, and that could very well be. I, I'm not as I think we've outlined at this point. I'm not, we, I'm not extremely the, high Maybe on. the 2-3 swap. 2-3 sure. swap. All right. I would do that too. What about Laporta? Laporta plus tight end premium. Madison. Yeah, tight end premium. If you're you're I mean, you're a contender, you know, your your tight ends are questionable. You know, you've you've got, you know, you can never have enough running back depth. Let, let's just say for 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 shits and giggles, you've got the running back depth to 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 play with. Are you moving Madison? I need for, a two. I would need Laporta and a two. Okay, that that's me because I'm getting two seconds then. Yeah, I do like. I think Laporta is going up more than where he was being drafted at, but I don't think his ADP has moved much in terms of rookie ADP. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't hate that. That's a tough one for me. I, all these other ones, I felt pretty confident in the answer going one way or another. When you said that, I was like, man, I, I think the, I think the value is decent. I think the the points for this season is on the Madison side, um, mm-hmm. for sure. So I think potentially it is it's definitely on the Madison side, but but with the way that the hype could get out of hand quick uh, on Laporta. Yeah, yeah. And you may be able to keep them and ride the wave or you may be able to flip them too. So yeah. Um Boy, uh, yeah, a, I was I was just thinking about up. that from a tight end premium. Yeah. I, I know people if you're in one point seven five or, or higher in tight end premium, it's really hard to to get a tight end and so that's kind of i think a play that i might look at doing yeah. um all right well let's let's get out of the madison side and let's flip to the dalvin side real quick um like i said he's uh was last in that chart that's been floated around so he's dead um according to everyone on twitter uh, have a good show thanks everyone all right, all right speculative landing spots that you that you guys are are feeling seeing i mean obviously it's dallas and miami have been the hot topics. Yeah, and then Denver thrown in there as well, too. Denver. We've mm-hmm. we Discord. We talked a little Rams, maybe Chargers in there. I don't think the Rams are in play for Dalvin. Maybe not, but 
Prop most likely not, but I just you know throwing throwing a couple other you can names. You put the in Bucks the in that category then too. You could you could throw the Bucks in there. You could throw the Bills in there. Um, you know. Yeah. The Cooks uh, on, on. Too many Cooks in that kitchen. So you know. Chicago. Can you see Chicago? Chicago getting super dirt. messy. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe it's extra messy. Maybe yeah. the Bengals if you know they're not super crazy about what's gonna what what they're doing with Mixon or whatever hey yeah. we, we can bring this guy in for a little cheaper uh we can cut Mixon, and uh, maybe we don't have a problem here for a season or two when we have super bowl aspirations and we we got a guy we could hopefully count on um but what i don't about, know what about kc kansas city would be they interesting. have like no money though apparently he, but he would he would probably play there for cheap because i think he is going to get some uh, uh, I should look it up, but he's going to get a handful of, I'm sure, I think nine million he may get from getting cut. So. Yeah. Um, so he can go somewhere and play for cheap. Yeah. Go chase a ring. Um, the jets would be a bummer. Um, what about, we said, we said Dallas, right? Yeah, I, I, I know we yeah. talked about that at the top, but I feel like Dallas is a, yeah, a pretty, uh, wide open backfield for, right. for his play style, you know? Right. Um, yeah. And I, I think he, I think I would rather, if I'm a, if I'm an NFL GM, I think I'd rather have Cook over Zeke. There we go. Oh, I almost said sure. Emmett Smith. Absolutely. I was like, wait, I definitely would have definitely wanted him over Emmett Smith. Smith. Yeah. But, but I think over Zeke, I, I think I definitely would be looking towards the Cook side. So, so. thoughts in general on Cook and, and what you would be trying to sell or pay here? Anything that, that comes off, off the dome real quick here for you guys? Future picks. I'm kicking that can down the road. I, I, um, mm-hmm. I think it's. I think I'm. I'm not trading any current assets. I'm trying to kick that can down the road and try to recoup it if I want to later. I don't think you're getting a first. I think that no. ship is no, probably sailed. No, not no. I think I would send my as a contender. I think I would send a 24. Would I do this? I would send a 24 second. Maybe ask for a third back. Um, I don't if I'm you know if I'm the person <laughs> trying to receive that I don't think I would do that but maybe maybe a rebuilding team would be like give me anything because Cook may never play again type of deal. So, yeah. Are um, you are are you guys trying to trade for Cook now or wait for him to sign? I think I would trade for him now if I'm yeah. if I'm interested in him because if he lands at any of those top spots that we said you know I think you can times two possibly his his whatever you could get for him right now whatever whatever that value is right now out in the in the free market i think he lands in miami or he lands in you know uh, for some reason the chiefs pull him in or, or e- even dallas i think that his value spikes pretty are you in, are you interested decently. in dalvin cook for the right price i hate to say the cop out but i i think i am i, I i'm not out on him um but it, are... i'm not i'm not actively going after like after this show i'm not actively going out and sending a lot of offers if if i think maybe maybe the play is at this point now that i think about it more maybe he's a throw-in piece right maybe he's somebody that you get a deal done with because of his name cache or maybe on the flip side of that i'm trying to get a deal done as a contender and i'm trying to bring in some competition and i bring him in as you know my my quote unquote second to add to the deal to get the deal done that that kind of thing. I think at this point trying to buy him straight up, I, I don't know what his value would be at, but it, but I think if I could add him into a trade, I definitely think that would be my play. RB eleven last year averaged fourteen points a game. I um, traded him just 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 to my own Horner. I traded him straight up for ETN last year. Mm, that was a juicy trade. We. We, as a tripod, as the OG tripod, me, Big Co, Jason traded him for a first right right at the end of the season, uh, uh, next year's first, 24 mm. first. Um, so uh, got out of there. Um, I have a contending team that, that's been, that's won, cashed basically the last three years, well, this last year, three years before this, didn't cash this last year. I want first, second, and a third. Um, and now I was on the outside looking in and I have Dalvin on the team. Um, so I'm in a, in a pretty precarious spot here. Do I, do I cash out on my, my team's still pretty good. I can certainly win this year. I didn't cash cause Kyler got hurt and I didn't, it's one QB and I was starting Colt McCoy and Davis Mills, uh, <laughs> down the stretch cause of, uh, my backups were also hurt. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a tough spot there. Like it's, it's, I feel like if you don't get rid of him now, he dies on the roster. 
Uh, but right. in that case where you're a contender, it's like, you know, I know, I know it's, you don't want anybody to die on the roster, but you know, it's, it's kind of the thing of, you know, maybe, maybe Madison isn't worth what he was, but if he helps me win a championship, then it's fucking worth it. If Dalvin comes in and, and has games when I, you know, when I need a player and, and on buys or injuries or whatever, and can give me a win, you know, it's worth it for him to die on my, I don't, I know that's, it's, it's the, the cool thing to have the sexiest team available and never be the guy that has egg on his face because this old running back died on your team. Well, it's like, I fucking want to win. Like that's, you know, it's, it's not a beauty contest all the time. It's a, it's a dollars and cents thing. So it's like in that particular team, I'm probably just holding like, and just, right. and hoping I can get another decent season out of Dalvin somewhere. Um, uh, you know, the yards over expected last overalls, maybe it's a cliff, but what I've also read on that is that it's not a sticky stat year over year. Like it, if it, you also it, go look at some of those efficiency stats, you'll see some really good players on there as well too. Like right. Barkley's been on there. Chubb's been on there. Right. Cause I was looking at that when I was talking about Kenneth Walker and Barry Sanders was on there. Right. Like we're talking about some. There were some really big names on there, and there were some really bad names on right. there. Right. So, uh, from what I took in, it wasn't super sticky from year to year. It can be a big no, but variance. it can help you. It, but it can help you prove your point if you wanted to. Well, that's you what know. all these stats are for. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's stats in general. It, yep. You know, it's it's you know numbers don't lie, and it's like yeah, but I can bend them to make my fucking half truth come true, um, you know, or or prove my point. Uh, so. You know, I I think what you're what you're striving for right now, if you're trying to get rid of them, is two twos would be like my what I'm trying to figure out how to like net that value to kind of be. Um, and it's you know, do you sell beforehand or afterward? I don't know. I don't know that I'm necessarily buying Dalvin Cook anywhere, but if I have him, I don't necess- and I'm a good team. I'm probably just kicking it and saying fuck it, like let's let's go. Um, you know, it's fine. I actually have Zeke on that team too, which, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, we're going to ride with those guys. And I got Pollard and Miles Sanders and uh, a couple other running backs that can that can get it done for me. And my receiving core is fucking bananas. And I got right. it's a tight end premium and I got good. So it's like, you know, you look at all these winning rosters and and throughout my leagues, it's it's bare. It's usually not the sexiest roster that fucking wins the goddamn championship. It's the right. one who gets hot at the right time and has enough depth to survive uh, a, a shitty, turbulent part of the season um, uh, or, or, you know, gets the right handcuff at the right time to, to win and pieces together. Or, you know, you have the right five guys at the end of the season who are hot and, yeah. and, you, and you were able to make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, right. How many te- how many teams won won championships last year because of Cam Akers? Right. Right. Uh, yeah, and it's just I, I was I think me and Big D were talking uh, the other day, and it was basically like, how many times have I made the playoffs or even won the championship because of a trade that didn't happen on my end that I was trying <laughs> to ship a guy off because I had to get rid of him or I had to buy this guy or whatever, and it didn't happen, and the roster that I had just got me into the playoffs and won the championship. It's it's been multiple occasions where that's happened. Uh, where I thought I had to do something and 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 I didn't. Uh, and I know this is you know the industry that we're in of of talking about all this stuff. But you know I think Dalvin Cook is is you know a good example of you know you don't. It's okay sometimes to just let guys die on your roster if your team's good. Um, well, happen. and I think if you look at like you know if you really if you're playing in the large rosters like we we typically do and and we enjoy like <clears throat> is he really any different than you know like a uh, I'm trying to think of somebody like <laughs> how many how many rosters still have chosen Anderson out there, right? Like uh, you know, Robbie right. Anderson, like like I mean, I, I I feel like on a contender, the juice that he could, you know, that little bit of juice that's maybe there's a lot of juice left. I don't know. And you you talked about Zeke too. Like there there's no sense of me moving on from those guys on a contending roster at this point. Uh, you know, especially at this point in the off season, like because I'm not going to get any value for them whatsoever. And the value that they could provide to me during, you know, during weeks of, uh, of bye weeks and all those kind of stuff, maybe they're not going to win you the championship. Hell, maybe they will, but more than likely they're not going to win you the championship, but they might be able to help you get there on a the right. championship roster. And, and so I would say that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sell just to sell. And if he, if he lands somewhere in Miami, 
and, I, and I'm on a contender, then, you know, I'm going to have to take a really hard look. And I don't know if I'm getting ready just to flip them. You know, as soon as I get a, a, a sell window, I'm flipping them. If I'm if I'm a team that finished, you know, maybe second overall last year, 111. Right. I got right. the 111 pick and and I'm I'm a couple pieces away. Just did my draft. I'm feeling pretty good about the season. I don't know if I'm just going to get rid of them to get rid of them, because, again, you kind of need those depth and those <laughs> those plays. Um you know, those hero plays, if you will, throughout the season to, to really pull you through to the championship. So, right. And it's um, not it's not to say that you, you shouldn't trade those guys, because if you, you should be trying to work deals, but don't you, I guess the sentiment is, is just don't give them away for pennies on the dollar because you feel like right. you have to. Uh, if, if you're a shitty team, then, then maybe so. But there's also a chance that, you know, there's a contending to even if I'm a I think I'm a contender, I go in whatever happens. I'm kind of a middling team by week. 12 or 13, there could be a contending team and Dalvin's hot for four or five weeks and it looks like he's going to be all right for a little while and you may get the best value you could possibly get about him at, at that particular time. And now some people right. are listening to this and saying, well, you idiot, you should have sold those guys when they were 25. And it's like, yeah, I guess so. I wouldn't yeah, want like a championship. I, yeah, like I did. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't want a championship uh, with right. if I did that. And, and so, you know, that's kind of the cross you have to bear sometimes uh, to actually win these things. Uh, so... You know, I, 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 um, I, I'm, I'm interested to see where Dalvin goes. It, it does seem like this off season, there was a lot of, you can't draft a bunch of these guys. Um, and you know, there's a lot of guys who were Ecklers and CMCs and all these old, a little bit older guys that all of a sudden we got the goal, the goalpost just moved by a bunch of these guys that, oh, well now, now you, you got to get rid of them by 27. Oh, well, now they all were like the top fucking 10 RBs. Oh, uh, now we got to move. We got to move the goalposts. So you got to get rid of them by 28. And it's like, yeah, you know, there's an ebb and flow of these running backs throughout history here where, yeah, the, the model for when all you younger guys started playing was, you know, you had to get out by through this time period. You did have some guys who got you, the Le'Veons, the Gurleys, the David Johnsons, you know, the, the, those guys got you and they're, they're skewing whatever model you put together. Well, there was also a, a long history where guys went and performed really well until they were 30. And it, it would assume mm-hmm. that we should get back to that area here because sports medicine is getting better and better. So we should be, especially with these guys who can, you know, afford uh, pass, uh, their game in the pass catching uh, realm here. Um, and that, you know, haven't had any crazy injuries like, you know, Nick Chubb might worry me a little bit um, just because of an injury from a long time ago. But he, I guess he doesn't really. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Is Lenny going to fall off a little bit? Maybe. Uh, but he was awesome last year. Um, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's also not playing anywhere right now. He's also not signed anywhere. And shit, he could end up in, in Minnesota, um, right. you know. He could end up in Miami uh, to, to give them. He could end up in Dallas to give them something, you know, a lot, lot of he could. But a guy like Leonard Fournette, he's not the guy that I'm expecting to be good until he's 31 because you already know what he kind of is and, and his attitude is like. It's the guys that are the Austin Ecklers, that are the CMCs, that are the uh, Saquon Barkleys, that are the Derrick Henrys, that are the, you know, th- these type of guys who want to be great and are going to take like Leonard Fournette could fucking give a shit less. Like, and you already know that, like he's right. coming into camp fat. He doesn't give a fuck. Like, so, you know, it's just going to be interesting here. I think as we move forward, I think we're going to see some of these, this group of guys help shift those statistical models back to the 29, 30 area for running backs. And, you know, obviously it's the elite of the elites that are going to be good until that time. I mean, you know, it's right. not gonna, It's not going to be, uh, who, who's a sh- shitty running back here? Um, you know, it's not going to be Eno Benjamin or, or uh, uh, you know, or Algier or I mean, <laughs> uh, Damian Pierce. So I mean, yeah, necessary I, strays. <laughs> right. Uh, so anyway, uh, I don't, we got kind of sidetracked here and sidebarred, but you know, just kind of got into a little bit more of a veteran conversation on running backs. You know. Respect your fucking elders. Right. Will you? I mean, right. come on. They're all now. younger than us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I think, you know, just to kind of cap this off, I think as we get further and further into the dynasty thing and more people, it gets bigger and bigger and more people get into it. It's and already like, pretty. It's getting it's, it, right. But we've we've been in it since it wasn't. Um, and you know, whether we were podcasting or not, um, you know, I think it's 
nobody wants to look dumb by getting caught with these guys on your roster. But at a certain point, you know, we're over here talking and trying to give you the best ideas and, and, and paint a picture for you of, of what to do and how to do. And, you know, sometimes we're just coming up with shit to talk about to, to have something to talk about, but let's not get it lost that, that, that at the end of the day, you are trying to win. Um, you know, yeah. right. is it that much fun drafting Cooper cup right now in the, in the late third, fourth round? No, but I mean, he could give you two years and if you draft the appropriate roster that uh, he could fucking crush it for you. Um, right. you know, is it, is it that fun drafting some, I, I don't have a, I wasn't prepared for this. So we just kind of got on a tangent here, but you know, there is still guys who, who garner some good value and, and are good on your roster. And I, I know it's not sexy or, or the, the cool thing to do, but I mean, winning is the cool thing to do. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and you should have a period if your league's any good you should have a period if you had a good roster that you know you're gonna eat shit for a year or two that's kind of how that should kind of go that's how everything goes look at any you know the patriots have been the only example of that long sustained success for a very long time and they were probably cheating (laughs) they were definitely (laughs) cheating (laughs) yeah i think that if you if you feel like you're always in the 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 middle of your pack right like start 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 to take a better look at what you're doing, what you've done in the past. Like if you play this game for a little bit, if, if you're just starting out, you know, you're going to learn. You Don't be afraid to make mistakes. But I think if you've been around for four or five years and you, you've just noticed that a lot of your teams are like middling, start looking at what you're actually doing. Go back and look at what you've traded, what you haven't traded, where you've stopped, where your values were and where they are today. And like, like really start to piece together a picture of who you are as a player. Cause I think that's really important in, 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 dynasty football but we can get even deeper right in life like don't be afraid to make mistakes and reflect on what you're doing and take a chance man like there's nothing like winning a championship you know um in an established league especially if you're playing with your boys i know it's hard to have some of these shitty lineups where you've got you know you've got nine starters and then your your bench looks like crap but but hell like if you're if you get hot at the right time or you, or you make the right moves and and you're not going to do those things though if you don't try if you don't put it out there and then like you said i mean i i saw a dude uh he 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 sold off cuz he, he took over an orphan and he sold off and he had seven of the 12 first round picks this season like he you know that that's great that's wonderful his his roster is going to look pretty when you put it into a dynasty calculator or you put right. it into any of those kind of things but but he's still got an upward battle to climb right he's still got to he's still got to get there so i'm not saying that i'm 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 afraid like when the time's over sell out try to try to like you said be bad for a little bit but don't i think at the end of it don't be afraid to try i think that's that's the hard i I've made plenty of mistakes. My values aren't what other people's values are. I've got hammered on, you know, in, in my, my league chats, I've got hammered on discords at times. I've got hammered on Twitter. If I posted there, I got, you know, but, but I'm not afraid to try because I want to win a championship every year. If I can, you know, I I play a collection. I want to win every year. So what's, what's the other crazy part of that is, is, is I could take it back to when we first started playing and, we were in a home league because that's usually how this starts. Sure. And Big Co made a trade. Big Co made a trade so bad that it made two guys quit. Two years later, that trade was so bad for Big Co's side. And the guy who every, who where everybody was irate over this trade. And this is in the beginning when, you know, nobody really knew what was going on. And this was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but it's like those things that you're posting and those mistakes that you made sometimes in two years, you might have been on the fucking right side of that thing. <laughs> right. It just, you know, you just don't fucking know. Uh, so, you know, and the snowball effects from all those things. Uh, so, you know, I think I think that's a good point of, you know, scared money doesn't really make money. Now, yes, should you just be out there fucking doing crazy shit all the time? Like, no, man, you should try to be wheeling and dealing. And, and, and the best success I ever have in Dynasty is is from is from being locked into a league and being attentive to what's going on and and constantly sending offers and building and sucking the most value out of every single trade that I can get and knowing the people by, by sending those trades and going back and forth with people, you learn what, what they value, who they value, how they value all of those things. So those are all nuggets you can stash away for later. Um, and those are all important things. If you don't like to trade, then, you know, you know, it's probably gonna be a tough time for you to, 
to not win to to win consistently like you might yeah. be able to maiden your way into some winning but it's going to be really hard to keep that thing afloat uh anywhere near the top for any sustained period of time if if you're not moving some shit around and and again it's not to wrap up the veteran conversations because so congratulations big d this is the first time uh you've really been on the show and we've married to the game this bitch way off <laughs> fucking topic um way off the rail yeah, yeah. uh but it's so, things that make you go hmm that uh, right that get us there so right right so anybody got anything else before we get out of here i had something i forgot it but we've been going on for way too long and dalvin cook hasn't been mentioned in a while uh so you got anything matt no we uh I think we, I don't, know, I don't know if we hit the nail on the head, but we, but we had lots of nails on lots of areas. Yeah. If if we were playing stump, we hit the nail a lot. I don't know if we <laughs> bent it over and won. Yeah. Uh, so, Big D, you got anything before we get out of here? No, brother. I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm ready for the season. Uh, you know, we're in June, but uh, we'll get there. And oh, I'm ready for tra- got- I'm ready for training camp buzz season. Yeah, we got lots of good stuff coming and and. Uh, until then, everybody stay safe. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Tell us how upset you were about this episode because it went way <laughs> off the rails. A little $5 holler. Um, and uh, the $5 holler on the Discord's always good. We're building, creating, uh, adding to ADP over there. Um, we're, we've kind of got that starting to dial it in, and we're going to continue to refine that. Uh, we got mock drafts. We're going to be going live here Uh I believe on Monday, and we're going to try to be doing a little bit more live stuff leading into the season. So again, be sure to subscribe uh, for all that jazz. Uh, For Big D, Matt, your boy Casey, uh, we're out of here, and we'll see you next time. Appreciate you. Peace.